welcome to Sculpture Studios. We've taken on a few projects now, over the course of the last year or so, for art-infused hotels, and this project is one of them. Having been contacted by Alex Bell from Benjamin West, we've been approached with a project here from the creative mind of Spanish artist and designer Jamie Hayon. His team at the Hayon Studio have sent across a concept design for what could originally only be described as a chicken-headed chrome balloon man, which later evolved into the sculpture known as the Dreamer. This piqued our interest from the word go, and we simply had to take a look at some of Jamie's other work. The Dreamer ties in wonderfully with his vibrant, coloured and playful style, which in this instance is the inspiring foundation of this new hotel's interior. Jamie Hayon's work could be found in numerous locations across the globe, and we found many examples online, and seeing the standard of his previous sculptures, we really wanted to be able to do this piece justice. In order to get the project going, we've produced a few samples in glass fibre to send to the Hayon Studio so that they can get a feel for the strength, finish and durability of the end product. Producing samples for the chicken man, thought it create a bit of a dip, a flat and then a crease on the corner and a bit of radius on some points like here, so you can see a double curve happening as well. So I think it's important to give them a, a good look and that 6 ounce glass nice and strong and leaving the poly in and then lots of filler and a beautiful finish. I'll show you one outside, we'll sort of we'll heavily prime this and rub it back uh, and then we'll wet and dry it as well so we don't get any orange peel or no little flaky or dots and um, yeah so we'll carry on with that as well and let that go until this evening and then we'll add the top coat. At the start of a project, our videos are often a way in which clients either find us in the first place, or they're a means for us to show examples of our previous work. This way clients know they're simply not buying something off of the shelf, and they can see the sort of processes that go on behind the scenes in order to create something like this. As I'm sure many of our followers know by now, we enjoy creating things by hand here in the studio. But for this project, much like Gus the Giant Gorilla or Nipper the HMV Dog, there really isn't any room for artistic interpretation. We want to achieve Jamie's concept as closely as we can, well within the time frame, and with no margin for error so that no changes need to be made later down the line. Having the main form sent away to be 3D cut in this instance was by far the best option. Many of our projects involve working from a sketch or a flat image, so this sort of master carving production isn't always possible. But here, as Hayon are able to provide a full 3D file, we're able to go down this route. But apologies to all of our styrofoam carving fans out there, not this time people, not this time. Here, we're creating a dividing wall along the edge of the sculpture pieces, so that the different sections could be moulded in two halves. We're going over with water-based paints and plaster mixes to sand this back to a really smooth finish before we start making the mould itself. It's important to get this to a decent standard at this stage whilst we're still working with relatively soft materials, and this will give us the best head start on the eventual surface finish later on. Oh, duty calls. I don't actually know anyone called duty, so I don't know who that is. Now, we originally quoted for a blanket coat of glass fibre and worked up to a good finish. This would mean going over with our secretly sourced sticky back tinfoil of course, before going over with glass fibre which somewhat softens the detail and actually requires a lot of work to get it back up to a good finish. But after seeing the high standard of Jamie's previous sculptures, we certainly didn't want to disappoint. With this in mind, we've opted for this mould making route, as not only does it achieve a truer form to the original shape, but also a far superior finish as well. We start by going over with a gel coat of resin, before backing this up with glass fibre, and naturally, once all the materials have set, we need to flip the shapes over to repeat the process on the other side.
When the mold is complete, the polystyrene pattern from the inside is taken out and we're using a jet wash to remove the plaster layer without scratching the internal surface of the mold. We then go in with a liquid wax and a PVA blue layer and these act as release agents to help extract the fiberglass cast later on. In the same fashion that the mould was originally made, we start by going in with a gel coat of resin followed up by glass fibre. In this case we're using multiple layers of fiberglass to ensure the cast is strong and durable. When the resin has cured, each of the pieces are then extracted from the moulds, trimmed and tacked together to then be laminated from the inside to create a really strong internal join. This entire sculpture, which is made up of a figure at over 6 foot tall on a 76 cm high base, is particularly tall with a particularly small base footprint, so we need to consider how this is going to be fixed in position on site. There has been talk about simply adding weight or ballast to the bottom half or the base of the sculpture, but with something so tall, slender and particularly heavy, there's no guarantee that someone still won't be able to push this over and either causing damage to the floor, the sculpture or, God forbid, a member of the public at the same time, so another option needs to be explored. Obviously, we're not involved with the rest of the hotel construction, so we're following Benjamin West's lead on this and liaising with the appropriate teams that this is being tackled by. The decision has been made to have internal metalwork running up through the sculpture and a heavy steel base plate and pole. This base plate can be bolted and bonded to the floor on site, whereby the sculpture can then be secured down onto it. This is before you guys are married. Yeah. Yeah. Here we are, scratching a bum. Yep. <laughs> Rub rubbing down a butt, a bit of butt practice. And then once we're married, it's all the same, really. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love a butt scratching. <laughs> ah, l'amour. Or in Spanish, that's amar, isn't it? Young love and fraternising in the workplace. We've got it all going on here. Once the seam lines have all been cleaned up, and the entire surface has been worked up to where we'd like it to be, we first go over with a 2K car body grey primer before a top coat of the yellow that the client has sent us. Gloss, of course. Once the sculpture's been sprayed, unfortunately that's not the end of the project. Like I said, we're going to try and get this as pinch perfect as we can for our clients. In this case, we're really going above and beyond here, continually working up the surface, removing any scratches, dust, specks or dull spots, which in itself is a time-consuming process. Our studio is notoriously dusty, so keeping something clean here, well, that's a big deal. Special treatment, that's what it is, folks. We're going over with finer and finer wet and dry gritted papers into the thousands, polishing the surface with a tea cutting compound and sometimes it's a case of catching the sculpture in just the right light to see all of the imperfections. I mean, these videos that we put together really do sugarcoat the laborious tasks, but sometimes we feel the need to leave some of this in just so you guys can get a glimpse of what really needs to go on behind the scenes. With Aiden and Jess working up the sculpture surface, Kev is now creating a trolley that the sculpture could be laid down on for safe transport and handling. We're going to make sure this is wrapped up nice and snug with instructions of where to and where not to lift the sculpture, and making sure that the trolley exceeds the max length so that there are no accidental bumps or knocks along the way. I suppose the only real question left is, where is this going? Well, this is staying right here in merry old England for the brand new Art Hotel in London. This is going to be in Battersea, on the London south bank of the River Thames, which to us here in Essex isn't actually too far away. The entire area of Battersea, including the power station, has taken on a complete theme of transformation and reinvention. The location is no stranger to artistic influence. The power station's exterior was originally designed by the same architect and designer that created the iconic London Red Telephone Box. The building was decommissioned between the 70s and 80s, and after now sitting pretty much dormant for about 40 years, with its fate being bounced around between numerous contractors, it's finally been reopened to the public with brand new shops, pubs, restaurants and leisure venues. There was even talk of it becoming an indoor theme park at one point. Now situated just across the road is the new Battersea Art Hotel. 
The hotel houses its own gallery with featured artists, but in all honesty, the whole hotel is a gallery in itself, which showcases a vast body of work and influence by Jamie Hayon. The Dreamer now proudly sits in one of the ground floor lobbies and contributes to the numerous splashes of colour throughout the building. We'd like to thank Alex Bell and the rest of his team at Benjamin West for coming to us with the commission, and to Jamie Hayon himself and his team at the Hayon Studio. Please feel free to leave any comments below as they're always appreciated, and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for our latest videos. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram via the links below, and for all of our true diehard fans out there, you can now become a patron of our studio. All of our supporter contributions go towards the creation of these videos, so if you enjoy our content, you know what to do. Becoming one of our credited patrons means you'll be featured at the end of our upcoming YouTube projects like these guys here, so visit the Patreon link with this video to show your support. However big or small, it's greatly appreciated from all of us here at Sculpture Studios. Thank you very much for watching. Adios!